Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie, with my morning coffee. So, hi, here we are on day 23 of the Advent calendar. So, only one more day after this that you have to put up with my singing. I bet you're really pleased about that. Now, first thing I want to say is uh, thank you, as always. Uh, put my ticker on for five minutes. Thank you to everyone for watching, liking, subscribing. Uh, my members especially, thank you for becoming a member of my channel. Oh, and I just wanted to say to members, you know the, the novel that I'm writing. Um, I have written, there are two more, two more parts, you know, to finish off the introduction to the characters. And I've done part 10. But I haven't done character nine. So I have character 10 very clear in my head. And I've done that and I'm ready to record that and pour it out for you. But I want to do character nine, obviously, otherwise we've got like a gap in between. And that I'm going to do that sometime over the Christmas weekend. So sometime over this weekend, I will be finishing that off and putting out those last two episodes of the sort of introduction if you like to the characters in the crime novel so i hope you're enjoying it i know a lot of you are so you've probably been wondering why i've not done an episode for a while it's also with the run-up to christmas and everything finding doing the advent calendars and finding the time to sit down and do it but i have done not part 10 and i've nearly finished part nine so that'll be coming out soon so thank you to my members because that's one of the perks of being one of my members we we'll do the there's normally Thursday night lives, uh, members only lives, and also um, you can you get like exclusive um, chance to read the, my crime novel as it's developing. And in the new year, there will be some more members perks. So I'm looking forward to telling you about those in the new year uh sorry so yeah anybody who has sent me a super i really appreciate that anybody who's bought me a kofi lots of you have done that like as a thank you uh which is so much appreciated because as you know that sort of appreciation it's not only for financial things it's just when i feel like giving up it's the messages of support that always make me feel like carrying on uh, so thank you for that. Anyone who's supported me in any way, people have messaged me, they've sent me emails. I appreciate every one of them. And I do work my way through my emails, try and get through to them as, uh, you know, try and answer all of them. Sometimes it just might take me a little while to get through them. Okay, and I'm wearing my dress. I'm wearing my 12 99 uh, lefties dress um, for this video. And I was, because I think I'll wear this on Christmas Day, but I may, actually, I'm going out shopping today. I'm going to go and see it and have a look at me. Because at the end of the day, it was only €12.99, Euros so I feel like I've still got some budget left for some more Christmassy or New Year type uh, clothes. Okay, now, something I wanted to show you as well before I start. Let's take that off now. Is, um, of course, this is Advent Day number 23 but have done an advent calendar for every day. And the, the point of this has been doing something positive every day in the build-up to Christmas, you know, because not everybody's looking forward to Christmas. Uh, as we say, every day people could be really in financial hardship. It would be facing bereavement for the first time. They could have uh, family problems where they're estranged from the family. They could be lonely. They could be estranged from their children. You know, you just you just don't know. Look, people problems don't go away just because it's Christmas time. You know, in fact, sometimes bad things happen at Christmas time. So for all those reasons, some people won't be looking forward to Christmas. And I know from the emails that I've received, some of you out there that are watching, that's how it is for you. And so hopefully these advent calendars just give you something positive every day. Now, so just to show you, because people may not realise, so I, I, I always, sometimes you don't realise that maybe people um, don't know, because sometimes I think people think as well when things are live, 
I mean, this isn't live, but then they're not sure that they can go back over it. But all my Advent, if you want like a full dose of, if it maybe you've not a chance to see every one and you want a full dose of pos uh, positivity, you go on my uh, YouTube channel and you go to playlists. You know, they, all the all my videos are on there. So there's the Nicola Bully College of Policing Report, the Advent Calendar playlist, um, Rants of the Day, Summer Wells, etc. And so, so I do put everything into playlists. So if you're interested in a particular subject, there's like serial killers or um, Madeleine McCann when I went on location to Pride Luth. Um, you can go. Like, so, for example, if you want to watch the Advent calendar because you've not had time to watch them, they're all there on the foot on the playlist. You can go back and look. It doesn't matter if you miss them at the time. They're all there from 1st of December. Uh, right up, and it will be right up to the 24th tomorrow is the last one so just to let you know that if you want a an overdose on positivity and silly singing and you know whatever then there you go you can go on the playlist and just let play maybe as you're cooking your christmas dinner and of course the books are on there as well the confessions of a spanish teacher all the episodes and this crime novel for members uh, that's only for members at the moment uh, i may release it when i get to the end of the introduction i may release it publicly because then i'll be on to the next section but the members have seen it as it's been developing so okay so that's basically all i wanted to say about that let now so let's look what's the positive story for today well you know at the moment there's so much uh, you know, as I say, it doesn't stop at Christmas, does it? Bad things in the world. There are wars going on left, right and centre, it feels like. And I suppose there always have been, to be fair. I don't think there's more wars now than there were. But it's, we get to know about them all now, don't we? No matter where we are, no, these everything affects us because it's on our TV screens. Um, and even, even though we're not lucky enough not to be there in the middle of a war, we do get to see it on TV screens saying we uh, screens with same with disasters and you know so sometimes it just feels like there's all these terrible things going on uh, but there are probably or always have been but we just didn't get to know about it but anyway so something that happened in two in um night in the first world war that you may or may not know about was the christmas Truce, and that's what I want to talk about today. So, of course, the First World War was a particularly nasty war, wasn't it? Uh, you know, all wars are nasty, but a lot of people died. It felt like it wasn't really, it was just over a few sort of feet of land and no, nothing was really achieved, was it? Uh, that's how it felt in the First World War. It was, um, you know, very strange war, really, actually. But anyway, but there was some moments at Christmas. Now, as we're coming up to Christmas, now it'd be nice, wouldn't it, to have a truce now this Christmas and all the wars. I mean, I'd like to just see them finish, be done with, gone, you know, but that, that's probably not likely to happen, is it? So, but at least a truce, you know, a ceasefire, let people, God, that, you know, just some time to sort of recover i i don't know to me it should be a permanent ceasefire but um you know unfortunately i don't rule the world at the moment so <laughs> but if i ruled the world every day would be the first day of spring I should sing that one day actually i'm gonna to have to start singing more often i mean today it's all christmas songs i'm going to butcher another christmas song today for you while i play the uh, christmas photos but I just want to tell you, first of all, about the Christmas truce. And I am reading directly from Wikipedia because they've got all the details on there. I don't know all the details. But, OK, so the Christmas truce in German, it's Weihnachtsfrieden. And in French, it was Treve de Noël. In Dutch, it was Cursed Bestand. Anyway, it was a series of widespread unofficial ceasefires 
along the western front of the First World War around Christmas 1914. Now, the thing is, these weren't ceasefires organised by the powers that be. These were the soldiers themselves, soldiers from the United Kingdom, France, Austria, Hungary and the German Empire and the Russian Empire. So these were the soldiers themselves. So the truce, um, this was Christmas 1914, so it was only the first year of the war. Did The war carried on for another four years, so unfortunately it didn't work, but at least it was something. And these sort of things, they warm your heart because, you know, when people fight soldiers, they're all just people. You know, you've got opposing sides, uh, you know, they, and we always think, oh, we're right and they're wrong. And, you know, often maybe that is the case. But at the end of the day, these are just people who are fighting. These are people there. I mean, then there wouldn't have been many women fighting. So those sons, their fathers, their brothers, you know, just the same. Uh, in that way but they're being sent to fight normally for you know um, this is why I'm a pacifist because I think if everybody refused to fight then there would be no wars but unfortunately you'd probably always have some people who wanted to fight some people like fighting unfortunately but um, I do believe in the basic goodness of people Anyway, this particular truce occurred five, only five months after hostilities had begun. So lulls occurred in the fighting as armies ran out of men and munitions and commanders reconsidered their strategies. Following the stalemate of the race to the sea and the indecisive result of the First Battle of Ypres. Now, the thing is, so many young men were killed, so many. And the average age, I think, was 19. Do you remember that song? There was a song uh, released about it. The average age of men who died were 19. <laughs> you know, it's awful. War is a horrible thing. Why can't people just get along? Why can't people just accept each other's differences? Anyway, in the week leading up to the 25th of December, French, German and British soldiers crossed the trenches to exchange seasonal greetings and talk. The thing is, all those men are missing home at, on Christmas Day. There's no, you know, it's like, that is a leveller, isn't it? In some areas, men from both sides ventured into no man's land on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day to mingle and exchange food and souvenirs. There were joint burial ceremonies. So what they did was it gave them a chance as well to return uh, bodies, you know, of soldiers that had crossed the lines and been killed. And they took them back into each, you know, and allowed uh, them to be buried. Uh, prisoner swaps and several meetings ended in caroling. Men played games of football with one another, creating one of the most memorable images of the truce. Whereas hostilities continued in some sectors and in others, the sides only settled on arrangements to recover bodies. So the following year, so that was 1914, the following year, a few units arranged ceasefires, but they weren't, the truces were not nearly as widespread as in 1914. Uh, probably for a, a mixture of reasons. Well, it's saying here this was due in part to strongly worded officers, uh, uh, sorry, orders from commanders prohibiting um, truces. And then by 1916, uh, by 1916, they weren't really amenable to truces because the war had gone on too long, hadn't it? And it, they were really bitter, I'm sure, uh, and all affected after the, uh, God, the PTSD that they must have suffered during the battles of 1915. So, you know, two years later, they've sort of gone beyond truces. Anyway, they were, apparently, they weren't unique to the Christmas period and they reflected a mood of live and let live where infantry close together would stop fighting and fraternise, engaging in conversation. Now, the thing is, they had more in common with each other than they did with their officers and that, that was sending and the kings or whatever that was sending them to fight, whoever was sending them to fight. They had more in common with each other, just normal people, you know, being sent to fight. 
you know, being used as cannon fodder, really. You know, nobody cared about their lives. You know, the the officers, etc., and the the people who were whatever the fight was even about in the first place. They didn't care about these individual people's lives. You know, so really they had more in common with each other because they were all just cannon fodder. Anyway, in some uh, sectors, there were occasional ceasefires to allow soldiers to go between the lines and recover wounded or dead comrades. In others, there was a tacit agreement not to shoot while men rested, exercised or worked in view of the enemy. The Christmas truces were particularly significant due to the number of men involved and the level of their participation. Even in quiet sectors, dozens of men openly congregating in daylight was remarkable and they're often sorry i get you know don't take much to get me emotional and are often seen as symbolic movement of peace and humanity amongst one of the most violent conflicts in human history uh you know this is it the, the, just awful war is awful so all those wars that are going on at the moment you know, I pray every day, honestly, God, I pray every day for the people that are affected by them, for the animals that are affected by them. Um, and just let them stop. Let them stop. There's got to be, there's always a way. You just, you know, a lot of the, what, you, you can't see the way at the moment with a lot of wars going on. But you, you think, where's, for there to be a way to stop wars, there's got to be dialogue. This is what is annoying me at the moment because it's all about, you know, sending arms, doing this, doing that. What about trying to peace talks? To me, it's the duty of anyone who's not involved in a war, like the UN or, or you know, it's their duty to try and uh, cause peace. It's not their duty to pe perpetuate wars. It's their duty to help to find a solution to wars and I know it's difficult and it may you know but sometimes you just think are they even trying or are, is it all about you know arms and sort of you know someone's making a lot of money out of these wars out of people's misery um some companies you know these are in the the arms companies and what oh they're laughing all the way to the bank anyway so this happened during the so during the first eight weeks of world war one French and British troops stopped the German attack through Belgium into France outside Paris at the first Battle of the Marne in early September 1914. And so the Germans fell back uh, to the Aisne Valley where they dug in. And in the first Battle of the Aisne, the Franco-British attacks were repulsed and both sides began digging trenches to economise on manpower and use the surplus to outflank to the north their opponents. Those trenches were just hell. Hell to imagine being in a trench, you know, really you're just there sort of in miserable conditions in the winter and then, you know, you pop your head up and you could get your head blown off at any moment. What? How horrible. Anyway, uh, in the race to the sea, the two sides made reciprocal outflanking manoeuvres and after several weeks, during which the British forces were withdrawn from the Aisne, I, I know I won't be pronouncing that right, sent north to Flanders, both sides run, ran out of room and by November armies had built continuous lines of trenches running from the North Sea to the Swiss frontier. So there were peace initiatives just before Christmas. There was an open Christmas letter, which was a public message for peace, addressed to the women of Germany and Austria, which was signed by a group of 101 British women's suffragettes. Now, one day uh, I'm going to do uh, a video on the suffragette movement because uh, that was just so important as well. Anyway, at the end of 1914, Pope Benedict the 15th on the 7th of December had begged for an official truce between the warning, uh, warring governments. He asked that the guns may fall silent so I'm gonna cry. at least upon the night the angels sang and this was refused by both sides. Now 
uh, as you know, I'm not a believer in sort of organised religion and that. And the, the, but when the, it's good when the Pope, that's to me, that's what the Pope's there for. If he's there for anything, I mean, he sits in luxury in the Vatican and tells people what to do, which that I don't like. But when he, uh, I think Pope Francisco, now he has called for peace as well, hasn't he, in the wars? But nobody listens anyway. So okay, so yeah. So fraternization, which was peaceful and sometimes friendly interactions between opposing forces, was a regular feature in quiet sectors of the Western Front. And in some areas, both sides would refrain from aggressive behaviour, whereas in other cases, it extended to regular conversation or even visits from one trench to another. So you can't sort of imagine that one day they're like trying to kill each other and the next day they're having a chat and a cigarette in the other person's trench. So the first truces between British and German units can be dated to early November 1914, around the time the War of Manoeuvre ended. Rations were brought up to the front line after dusk and soldiers on both sides noted a period of peace while they collected their food. Ay, strange, isn't it, really? It just, it's just odd, isn't it? It's like, uh, you know trying to kill each other and then the next minute being friendly. Just just be friendly. Forget the trying to kill each other bit. Uh, so in early December, a German surgeon recorded a, a regular half-hourly half truce each evening to recover dead soldiers for burial, during which French and German soldiers exchanged newspapers and this behaviour was often challenged by officers. Yeah, they wouldn't like it, but they're not there on the front line. Lieutenant Charles de Gaulle wrote in 7th of December of the lamentable desire of French in infantrymen to leave the enemy in peace. You know, they could, they, these people, as I say, they've got more in common with the other infantrymen than they have with Charles de Gaulle, who's just sent them out there to be murdered. Um, anyway, while the Commander of the 10th Army, Victor Durbal, wrote of the unfortunate consequences when men become familiar with their neighbours opposite. Other truces could be forced on both sides, sometimes by bad weather, especially when the trench lines flooded, and these often lasted after the weather had cleared. So because their trench lines were so close to each other, they could just shout over hi in that to each other. So this was probably the most common method of arranging uh, informal truces in 1914. Men would frequently exchange news or greetings helped by a common language. Many German soldiers had lived in England, particularly London, and were familiar with lang the language and the society. They would talk about football or other conversations could be banal as banal as discussions of the weather or messages for a sweetheart. Oh. And one unusual phenomenon that grew in intensity was music. In peaceful sectors, it was not uncommon for units to sing in the evenings, something sometimes deliberately with eye towards entertaining or taunting their opposite numbers. And this would become more and more festive. And in early December, Sir Edward Hulse of the Scots Guards wrote that he was planning to organise a concert party for Christmas Day, which would give the enemy every conceivable form of song in harmony in response to frequent choruses of Deutschland über alles, which of course means uh, Germany overall. And that was the like the the song that the Germans used to sing. So in Christmas 1914, about 100,000 British and German troops were involved in the informal cessations of hostility along the Western Front. The Germans placed candles on their trenches and on Christmas trees, and then they continued the celebration by singing Christmas carols. The British responded by singing carols of their own. So they continued shouting Christmas, uh, Christmas greetings to each other, uh, ex excursions across no man's land, small gifts were exchanged such as food, tobacco, alcohol and souvenirs such as buttons and hats. The artillery fell silent 
and the truce also allowed a breathing spell where recently killed soldiers could be brought back behind their lines by burial parties. Joint services were held and many, in many sectors the truce lasted through Christmas night and in some lasting as long as New Year's Day. So, um, you know, it, I won't read it all that because it does go on for quite a while. But that was how it started. But that first year, um, it just didn't, you know, it didn't, it got less and less every year. Now, it's, it's something to notice here. Some people opposed the truces, of course. And in, interestingly enough, at the because, you know, Adolf Hitler, he fought in the First World War for the Germans. And that was part of the reason, wasn't it, how he got, he became so political afterwards and got, because he was, uh, you know, became so popular because of, um, you know, the, the awful effect the First World War, War had on the German economy. And Adolf Hitler, he was a then a corporal of the 16th Bavarian Reserve Infantry, and he was an opponent of the truce. But some of the British, like the British general, Horace Smith Dorian, he issued orders forbidding family communication. So, you know, it's um, it wasn't popular with everybody. Anyway, so there was a lot, then these football matches. Now, I don't know if you can see this photo here. This is supposed, supposed to be um, from a, an informal truce in 1914, but apparently it's actually from the 25th of December 1915 in Greece. And it's uh, an informal football match. So, you know, as with everything, there are some historians sort of doubt the validity was it was it true were there truces or not really but i think it generally accepted that there were truces in the certainly in the first in the first years um there were definitely truces the live and let live system uh, agreements not to fire e each other at certain times apparently some people believe that went on throughout the war you know, just informal agreements by trenches that were close to each other. Um, but yeah, so let's, oh, I mean, to me, I don't want a temporary truce in all these horrible wars that are going on. I just want a permanent ceasefire. No more children dying, please, please, please. Uh, no, no more anyone dying. No more animals being traumatised. No more people being traumatised. You know, it's just awful. Awful, awful. Anyway, so I thought I'd share that story with you today. I'm sure you know about it. Um, you know, we don't know exactly what the truth is, but there was obviously something went on. There was something went on. Um, you know, some get for the to you know, there, there'll be some truth in it where the actual truth is. I don't know, it would take a long, much longer in depth video to look at that, uh, where the actual truth lies, where what the evidence is, and um, you know, but it's nice to think that uh, people, you know, really, people are 98% probably of people are they're good. You know, and they, you get this sort of two to five percent of people doing bad things that always make you, you know, think that human nature is bad. But actually, human nature is good. And these are the exceptions to the rule, but they affect the way we think about things, unfortunately. And I was thinking that when you look at the mainstream news, you are encouraged to be depressed, aren't you? You know, it's all bad news. You looked at the headlines on Sky News today because I had a little look, as I do every morning. Oh, my God, you know, it's like it's always uh, last-minute holiday chaos, isn't it, at Christmas, trying to you know put you off going outside Britain. So it's all about all the terrible holiday chaos that's going on. And then, oh, I don't know. what. Well, let's have a look. Let me just read out the uh, headlines today from sky news you know bearing in mind we're coming up to christmas let's have some good news 
So, a warn, UK warning of potential road, rail, air and ferry disruption as millions make Christmas getaway. Well, you were, you were, I, hate, I would hate to travel at Christmas, to be honest. And then for the t first time in living memory, there is no Christmas tree. Bethlehem praying for ceasefire as war rages on. And then we, they talk about Hamas. They talk about Charlie Sheen being assaulted by a neighbour. Uh, there's an interesting post there about the grandma of Alex Batty that we looked at last night in the Members Live. Uh, there's a, an interview that she's done. There's Wham's Last Christmas has made number one because I don't think they made number one when it first came out, but that's one of my favourite Christmas uh, songs of all time. But I've already sang that once. I, was, I thought I'll sing it again today, but I'm not going to because I've already sang it once. And then, yeah, the, another headline, the why it's a headline, Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker share first pictures of baby son Rocky. Yeah, I didn't even click into that, needless to say. I don't think, you know, it's lovely that they've had a baby, lovely. But I don't know them, so I don't think I really need to see their baby. Okay, so yeah, so all the bad news, isn't it? It's all bad news, and it's either global war, you know, if global warming doesn't get you, if there'd be a nuclear war or an asteroid strike, or you know, there's always something threatening us all, and then yeah, we just have to live for today, don't we? Just get on with it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the Christmas photos, and I will try and remember to actually put them on today. Uh, yesterday I forgot to put them on so you just got the pleasure of me singing Tom Jones she's a lady without actually being able to see the Christmas things but I will make sure that you can see them today uh, it's, it's a nightmare yes that's definitely there and the song I'm going to sing today is it's beginning to look a bit like Christmas. Sorry, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> okay, so here we go. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go. Take a look at the five and ten. It's glistening once again. Sorry. I've, oh, I've lost my words. Right. It, take a look at the five and ten. It's glistening once again. With candy canes and silver lanes that glow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store. But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. Pair of hop along boots, a pistol that shoots, is the wish of Barney and Ben. Dolls that'll talk and go for a walk is the hope of Janice and Jen. And mum and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. That all went wrong, wouldn't it, man? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go There's a tree in a grand hotel One in the park as well It's the sturdy kind that don't mind the snow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go there's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well. It's the sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. 
soon the bells will start. The thing that'll make them ring is the carol that you sing right within your heart. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store. But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. Take a look at the five and ten. It's glistening once again with candy canes and silver lanes that glow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store. But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, there's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well. It's the sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. Beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will ring. And the thing that'll make them ring Alexa. is the carol that you sing right within your heart. It's beginning to look a, light, a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store. But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. There you go. Now, of course, we've got some very special pictures as well of the doll's house, but I'm going to release that. I've got to put that all together and release that. I showed that in the members last night. One of the members has made, a, made up a special sort of doll's house scene with the Vicky Marie Chats theme. Which is fantastic. Um, and I will be showing that uh, tomorrow. So today basically is more or less your last day, possibly tomorrow, to put it, send in any Christmas photos that you might have. You know, your tree, decorations, you in a Christmas hat. You don't have to show your face. You, you know, some people have chosen there to send me in photos that show themselves there, but you don't have to. You can have a mask on, you can have a Father Christmas beard on, you know, but anything to do with Christmas you want to send in, it will all go together for the Christmas video. You know, every month uh, it seems to have started the tradition. It started with Halloween where we, uh, people sent in uh, pictures of themselves with masks on etc it was great and by the end of the month we had a collection of halloween pictures and then we did last month in november we did pets pictures and of course this month it's all been about christmas so i've got to have a think about what we're going to do in january what sort of pictures we're going to send in in january okay so i'm going to put my ticker back on just to say tra Tra, to a tra to everyone. Uh, yes, I will be back. If not later today, I would definitely be back in the morning for the very last Advent calendar. I will also be doing a special sort of Christmas Eve, uh, probably a live, a live or a video. I haven't quite decided yet. And then there'll be a little hello and Merry Christmas on Christmas morning. Uh, just so you know. Uh, hope it just help. I know a lot of you are really busy and you haven't got time to watch these videos which is fine you can always watch them at another time can't you if you want to uh, and then I know there are other people who do look forward to them which is nice I don't understand it 
<laughs> you know, just to hopefully just to make you laugh at times. It might be difficult. It's a difficult time at Christmas for lots and lots of people. So all I want to say is we have to remember that it's not you know a lot of people be having a great time really looking forward to christmas and a lot of people will just be thinking oh god just can't wait for this day to be over so uh who whichever one of those you are uh hopefully i can bring a smile on your face if nothing else so thank you as always main thing from me is thank you so much and remember to live and love wisely carefully and until i see you again may your god or oh, oh Oh, do you know what? I've been forgetting the bibbity bobbity boo. Where's my wand? It's because since I've taken the uh, wig off, I've forgotten that I'm supposed to be. So I use a blusher brush because I don't know where my wand is. I'll find it for tomorrow. Bibbity bobbity boo. Happiness, love, positivity for you. Till I see you again, may your God go with you. Bye. <laughs>